two, three. Happy Wednesday to each and every one of you. For David Hump Day, he laughed when I said that last week. And I pray that you're having a great week in the middle of the week. And what a great opportunity for us to join together again as a church and fast. So many wonderful things we see in Scripture And not just in Bible times, but in our own lives have happened as a result of us really praying and fasting and trusting God. So why not join us? We need a miracle in our church, our community, our nation and our world. And why not join together and pray with us and fast as we believe for God just to do that which we need. And so incredible is this thought, prayer changes things. So here's my question for you. Have you prayed about it? We talk to everyone else about it, but have you given it to God? Because when we give it to God and pray first, the promise is that his peace will come. So if we want God's peace, we've got to pray about it. Give it to God. So that's what we're going to be doing, praying and fasting, giving it to God. So here we are again, soaping God's word. We're looking at the observation, the application, how I can apply it to my life. And then we're praying to say, God, would you help us walk this out, to live this out? So this week we're studying Psalms 34. Man, is it an action-packed chapter? There is so much in there. It may take us a while to get through it. But here's the verses that we're going to read today. Psalms 34, verse 3 and 4. And it says this, O magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. I love that. He didn't just deliver me from some of my fears. He delivered me from all of my fears. So where do we start? As I said, so much in this chapter. So what's the observation? We see here that when we magnify God, when we exalt God, when we seek God, It equals deliverance. That's a great equation there. Magnify, exalt, seeking God equals deliverance. And when we see those things added in our life, God doesn't just stop with addition too. God wants to multiply those things and bring those things into our life. Back home, and I meant to bring it in today, Judah's got a real cool magnifying glass with a little light on. And what's the purpose of a magnifying glass? It's to take something small and make it appear to be so big, to make it bigger. Something that's maybe a little bit out of focus, you can't read or whatever. Wow, that it's made perfectly in focus. You know, my sad reality I see around me today is this, that we live in a culture that wants to make God so small today. His ability, so small. The fact that he's the answer to our life, almost non-existent. Oh, that, that's old fashioned. Why trust God with that. There's bigger and more important things than him. But one thing I've discovered is this. In a time of crisis, like we're facing right now, it tends to flip-flop things a little bit. Those things that we thought were big and important now become small. And the things that we've made small by wrong priorities and wrong decisions and choices now appear to be bigger again. And that's what the psalmist is telling us, that God's not small that we need to make him bigger. But I tell you what, we allow him to be small in our lives instead of letting him to be big. So the observation is, are we magnifying God with our lives, making his name God? And then it goes on to say, and let us exalt his name together. What does that mean? I nearly gave it away. Making his name great again. Let us exalt, make his name great again. What an opportunity we have to show the world a big God And how great God is. And I love that. If you would look back in your life, it says we've got to make his name great together. Look back in your life and some of the greatest accomplishments that you would see are the ones in a team. When you had other people around you. Oh, we can do good things alone. But there's so much more powerful things can happen when we do them together. So as we make God great again and make his name big again, and we do that together, man, the results are all around us. Then we see in verse 4, it says, And I sought the Lord, and he heard me. To seek God, to seek after God. Man, if you've lost something, what do you do? You've got to take time to look for it. You've got to seek it. You've got to pursue after it. Then what? We find it. I wonder how much time we really take to really seek God 
after God in our lives. Oh, we want the blessings, but we don't want the blesser. We want the rewards, but we don't want to be connected to the source. Then what's the observation? When we magnify, exalt and seek God, then his deliverance comes and he will deliver us from all of our fears. How does he do that? By an inner strength, an inner fortitude, because sometimes, like we've said, he doesn't always calm the storms around us, but he calms the storms within us. So what's the application? I'm going to ask you three questions today. First question is this. How big is God in your life? Maybe the small things need to be big and the big things need to be small. Maybe you need to rearrange your life, consider your life. Second question is this. Are your actions and attitudes exalting God? Are you making his name great again by just what you say, by what you do? Because you may be the only Bible that people will ever read. What Bible are they reading? What gospel? And you can look at that and say, oh, that's a pressure on my life. No, I don't look at that as a pressure. I look at that as a blessing. Because if my life and the attitudes and the actions of my life needs to represent God, then I need to be more careful. And I need to consider how I say and act and do because I'm showing people maybe the wrong Jesus. And question number three, am I taking time to really seek him? Come on, to really discover his peace, his comfort, his strength and the protection. Am I giving God the leftovers of my life or am I prioritizing my time with him? Come on, every day your time with God needs to be a priority to get in the word and pray, to worship, to lean into God. Make it a priority, not an afterthought, because you'll be glad that you did. Because when you do, deliverance, he will deliver me from all my fears. What a promise that we have through God's word. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again today for your promise, for your word. God, the truth that there is. And God, I want you to be big. I want your name to be great. God, I want to seek you with all of my heart. Why? Because when I do, God, you'll hear my cry. And God, you'll send the help and the deliverance that we need. And God, we've all got something that we need right now. And we cry out to you for that. And God, we pray that the hope of the answer would come into each and every one of our needs. God, we thank you today, God, again, for your protection that would be all around us. Your hedge of protection, keeping all sickness and disease from us. And God, help us in our lives to walk out the promises that God are available, that we would see them, God, come to come alive in each and every one of our hearts. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember Fasting Wednesday. If you can, fast with us today. If you can't this week, there's always next week. Stay connected. All the information's on the screen. Don't do life alone. Follow on social media. Just share it with your friends and let everyone know the great things that's happening at Encounter Church. Have an incredible day.